Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. After discussing the umbilical artery Doppler, which you can see in the I button in the top right corner of this video, now it's time to discuss the uterine artery Doppler ultrasound. And what is uterine artery Doppler? It is a specific ultrasound which measures the velocity of blood flow in the uterine artery. And what is uterine artery? It is the major blood supply to the uterus arising from anterior division of internal iliac artery. What are the indications of uterine artery Doppler? The indications include, first of all, previous history of preeclampsia. Secondly, previous history of a child with intrauterine growth retardation. Thirdly, the unexplained high maternal serum alpha fetoprotein level. And fourthly, the unexplained high HCG levels. Let us talk about the blood flow pattern in uterine artery during systole and diastole. During systole, the blood flow is very fast and this depends upon the contractile ability of a woman's heart. During diastole, the flow pattern depends upon the terminal vessels vascular resistance, mainly the spiral arteries. And what are the spiral arteries? The spiral arteries are the terminal branches of uterine artery. You can see in this picture. This is the uterine artery and this is the spiral artery. The characteristic features of spiral arteries include it is narrow, it is coiled, having high resistance. Let us discuss the uterine artery flow pattern in the non-pregnant woman. This is the normal uterine artery flow pattern in the non-pregnant woman characterized by a short rise and short decline during systole. The flow pattern during diastole is characterized by an early diastolic notch and reduced and diastolic flow. Let us talk about uterine artery flow pattern in normal pregnant woman. During normal pregnancy, the cytotrophoblastic cells will migrate outside of the evolving placenta. It migrates into decidua and part of myometrium. This is called the trophoblastic invasion. And these cytotrophoblastic cells are called the extravellus cytotrophoblast. This trophoblastic invasion results in remodeling of the spiral arteries, in which the spiral arteries become dilated capacitance with a, with a low resistance. This invasion changes the shape of uterine artery Doppler from non-pregnant woman, which means there is disappearance of the notch and there is markedly high and diastolic flow. Now let us discuss the uterine artery flow pattern in the preeclampsia and fetal growth restriction. In preeclampsia and in fetal growth restriction, the trophoblastic invasion is inadequate, means only few cells will invade the decidua and will not reach the myometrium. This consequently will result in inadequate remodeling of the spiral arteries. These abnormal changes will result in an abnormal uterine artery flow pattern demonstrated on uterine artery Doppler ultrasound which is characterized by the presence of early diastolic notch and reduced and diastolic flow. Let us do the comparison of uterine artery flow pattern in different conditions. First of all, uterine artery flow pattern in the non-pregnant woman. In non-pregnant uterus, a very highly convoluted high resistance arteries will result in diastolic pattern characterized by an early diastolic notch and reduced and diastolic flow. Secondly, the uterine artery flow pattern in pregnancy. During normal pregnancy, due to remodeling of the spiral arteries, the notch will disappear and the end diastolic flow will markedly increase. Last come the uterine artery flow pattern in preeclampsia and in fetal growth restriction. In placental diseases, like in case of preeclampsia and fetal growth restriction, the uterine artery flow pattern is somewhat in between the non gravid uterus and the healthy pregnancy. Let us talk about uterine artery Doppler in the first trimester. In the first trimester, uterine artery Doppler demonstrates the high flow and decreased resistance as the completion of trophoblastic invasion occurs. The presence of notch in the first trimester is normal and reflects the high vascular resistance. So what happens to the uterine artery Doppler in the second trimester? In this Doppler, you can see notch as compared to the normal waveform.
The persistence of notch in the uterine artery waveform late in the second trimester indicates abnormal placentation with a normal circulation associated with existing or impeding conditions like these or with abnormal circulation associated with, a, with existing or impeding conditions like these. First of all, preeclampsia. Secondly, IUGR, intrauterine growth retardation. Prematurity, placental abruption, stillbirth, cesarean sections, low birth weight. Now, how to measure the pulsatility index and resistance index on the uterine artery Doppler? The Doppler spectra of uterine flow help us to calculate the pulsatility index and the resistance index. The pulsatility index is used as a measure of impedance of the flow of the blood distance to the sampling point and is automatically calculated according to the formula and that is pulsatility index is equal to peak systolic velocity minus end diastolic velocity divided by TAV which is time average velocity. Here in this Doppler, S is the peak systolic, D is the end diastolic velocity and the average is the mean maximum Doppler frequency shift over the cardiac cycle. The resistance index is automatically calculated using the formula. Ri is equal to peak systolic velocity minus end diastolic velocity divided by peak systolic velocity. EDV is end diastolic velocity, Ri resistance index. PSV peak systolic velocity. In this Doppler, C indicates the early diastolic and X indicates the maximum diastolic frequency. So that brings us to the end of my presentation. I would like to complete it with this code. Success is often achieved by those who do not know that failure is inevitable. So thank you so much. Wish you all the best. Allah Hafiz.